Hey everybody, this is Phil Kohler, and I am here with Colin Campbell. Hello, Colin. Hello, Phil. Hello, everybody. And this is Volume, which I haven't played yet, but I'm very excited for. Colin, you reviewed this for us. Um, this is uh, this is from Mike Bithel, the game developer who brought us Thomas Was Alone, uh, which I was a very big fan of. Um, yeah, it's it's a lovely game. I, I gave it a nine. I played it a lot last week, and I was sorry when it was over. Uh, when I first approached it, I was sort of dreading it a little bit because these sort of stealth puzzle games can be extremely frustrating. Yeah, I'm not very good at stealth games. That's That's been one of my concerns as well. Yeah, I mean, you'll see here coming up, I, I, I end up killing myself because I make a tiny mistake. And there is a little bit of that in this game, but generally speaking, if you make a mistake, it's not because the uh, the guards are acting in goofy or there's some bad AI. It's because you made a mistake and you stepped on the wrong, uh, the wrong cone of vision. Ah, uh, sure. These guards, by the way, are pretty terrifying. And, um, you know, they're not, they're not like Keystone Cops or anything like that. You mess with them, they, they generally get you. This is pretty much a the type of stealth game where you're seen and you're dead. It is not a it is not a like you don't have combat options in this. No, there there aren't. I mean, there's a couple of levels where you can sort of run away from them and they, they and you can hide and, and and that's quite interesting. But but I kind of like it that that you know you just have to stay out of vision in order to stay alive. Now, part of the game is also you you have to kind of stand behind them and whistle or alert them or trick them and um, you can outrun them, but generally speaking, you you want to complete each mission without being seen. It's much more fun that way. Uh, one thing that I will say uh, that I, I appreciate about the game already, just looking at it, is uh, something I find important for stealth games. It has a very clear visual language. Like, it's really... Just watching this without having played it, I can already tell what certain things are. Like, I can tell how how easy it is to like okay that's the cone of vision and if i step out of it i'm gonna immediately be seen and like it's so important to get that stuff right yeah i mean we saw with thomas was alone that that bithel has a real understanding or the people that he work with, work with have a real understanding of visual languages of colors I mean, the color palette in this game is absolutely lovely you know you look at those different oranges and you know you wouldn't want to decorate your kitchen this way but in the context of a stealth game or a puzzle game it's, it's just it's just gorgeous. I want to say something now, which is that we're showing three puzzles here, and you know if you don't want to see how the puzzles are completed, obviously you know don't watch the game. And we're going to be sure. showing some of the gadgets that are shown fairly late in the game or the middle of the game. This is this is one, for example, where you release a decoy. Uh, you know the guards nice. go running after it. But but it seems like that will be a you know an awesome gadget that, that you could use and sort of breeze through the levels, but it's really not. And you'll see when I try to get past these four goons just how difficult it is to get to get it right. And there's a lot of trial and error involved in using in using the gadgets and getting the timing just right. And uh, you know that's part of the game's appeal I think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one other thing that that Bithel has always done well and particularly in Thomas was alone uh, was uh, there's a real sense of humor to the game. Um, is that is that still something that's in volume as well? Yeah, I mean, as 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 you can, as the listeners can probably tell, I'm British and Bithel is British, and there's a very kind of British sense of humor, a sort of understatedness about the jokes. Um, but also, the, this is a story about uh, the, the the near future, the sort of 2050s, in which England has been overtaken by. Uh, a, a corporate ocracy, and it's it's very much uh, uh, mirroring the Robin Hood stories of the Middle Ages. Sure. There's a real rage and anger, you know, within this game, within the writing of this game, about the way that that you know the public are treated by government, corporations, the media, and and it makes it makes the game that much more compelling and interesting and exciting, and and you get angry along with the character about the things that he's, you know, that he's, the, the, the system that he's trying to topple. Um, but, but along, you know, you, so you've got that, that anger along with the sort of like nice, understated sense of humor. Sure, absolutely. That's very interesting and um, definitely sounds like a, uh, some added depth compared to Thomas Was Alone, let's say. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And they, they, you know, they've, obviously he did well with Thomas Was Alone. He, the, the budget for this game is a lot bigger and he spent the, the money wisely on some really good voice actors. 
Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, so, how many uh, gadgets do you have in the game? I can't remember exactly, but there's sort of like, I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight or something like that. This Okay, cool. This okay, this cool. map we're gonna look at uh, the, the, the 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 instant moving from one room to another. And here I do it. <laughs> sure. There's a little cupboard here at the side. Uh, the the gadget that, that is in use in this level is a is a tripwire, uh, which you, you, you put between two walls. But the, you know there's other there's other tricks that you use just as I said before just standing behind a wall and whistling and then sort of nipping around the corner and then you know you, you do that all through the game and it never gets old it's just really good fun and there's just stuff like like throwing a shiny thing against the wall and the the guards just can't take their eyes off it they're just like oh you know look at this yeah. amazing shiny thing and you creep past them but but it, it, you know again you have to use them all wisely and smartly and sometimes you know the you know the trip wire here. You know, just getting the timing right and make sure you sure you, you put it in exactly the right place uh, sure. is, is is the trick. And uh, did I read correctly that there are uh, user created levels as well? Yeah, there's a there's a, a module within the game which allows people to create their own levels. This is the sort of thing that I'm completely terrible at, so I didn't sure. really have a go on it. I just had a look, and it you know it seems to work. It seems to be pretty simple to follow so I imagine we're gonna see a lot of user generated levels I think we're gonna see a lot of speed runs a lot of people trying to to break other people's records and, and the game is obviously being tooled for sort of social media and sharing yeah yeah that's very cool uh, well this seems really awesome uh, it seems like a a surprising but smart next move for uh, for Bithel yeah, I, I I recommend it. I think it's I think it's uh yeah, here I here I. Oh, we're so close. This was me doing it after lots of practice. So, um, yeah, I I, I highly recommend this game. I, I think that, that you're going to get a lot of fun out of it. It's, I spent about 15 hours playing it, but I think that uh, I'm going to go back and play some of the user generated levels. Definitely. Uh, cool. Well, I'm looking forward to checking this out. And uh, for anybody else who would like to check it out, it is. Available now uh, on, I believe, PC and PS4.